Who has Time Warner and Xbox Live? Who wants the SPN3 that can't get it on their Xbox Live with Time Warner? Well, some a bunch of people. So Time Warner said, even though ESPN has provided um, Xbox, or ESPN3 has provided over Xbox Live, we're not going to give it to you until, and they worked out some sort of agreement, uh, and it took time, but that's another supposed to end up violation. Anybody have a Samsung Fastly phone? Anybody? Sure. <laughs> what? Okay. <laughs> Apparently, it only uses the Bing search engine, so that's that's a supposed to end up violation because you can't use Google or you know or you know, whatever if you want. Um, last month, Metro PCS, which is the fifth largest or fifth largest uh, provider, uh, ISP or wireless provider in the country, put out a 4G plan. $40 unlimited data, and um, all the pro net neutrality folks were they are blocking they're blocking everything but YouTube. Uh, you can't use um, you can't use any of the applications that you want, and they filed complaints with the FCC. And it turns out that the, the only phone that they offer with this plan is, is called is a Samsung phone. It's not even capable of doing anything that any of these things that is blocked in. So again, is it really a net neutrality violation? The phone doesn't really act. If the phone doesn't it's not capable of using Skype, then it's, are they really blocking it? It's really 4G, then. Yeah. And really, it, the phone itself is, is not a smartphone. It's a feature phone. There's, there's, a, there's a difference. So how, how are these cases were resolved? Honestly, most of these cases were resolved by the market or by consumers complaining about it. None of these cases were actually resolved by the government jumping in and saying, you know, you need to fix this. However, while I may be leaning towards the anti net neutrality argument, I want you to take away after this talk in 8 minutes and 40 seconds that the process of how net neutrality is or is not implemented is as important to you as the substance of it. So how would net neutrality revolve, uh, resolve these violations or supposed violations? Well, someone would file a complaint with the FCC. The FCC would have a hearing, they gather evidence, they'd rule on it. If one of the parties didn't like the outcome, they wrote an appeal to the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals, and this could take years. So it, the way it works now is the way it's going to work if there's net neutrality rules like there is. Does the FCC actually have the authority to regulate the Internet? Well, this goes back to your ninth grade civics class. Legislative uh, branch versus the executive branch. Who makes the laws? Congress makes the laws, right? FCC can't write rules unless they're actually empowered by legislation to do so. There's about 300 members of Congress, Republicans and Democrats, pro net neutrality supporters, and people who are opposed to net neutrality, who are saying, FCC, you need, you need to slow your roll. We you haven't authorized you to do this. As you know, the FCC is part of the executive branch. They enforce the laws. They don't write the laws. They can't just go do whatever they want. They, they make regulations, that's correct. They do make regulations, but they have to be authorized to write those regulations by law. They can't just regulate something that they're not authorized by law to regulate. So, since uh, back in December, on December 21st, the FCC voted to uh, a new net neutrality rule, which, uh, again, the court basically said you don't have the authority to do, but they did it anyway. So that's where we're at in, in the current situation. The FCC thinks they have the authority. Uh, the courts say otherwise. So procedural issues. This is where it really is, is, is important to me. The process by which this happens is as important as the substance. Does the FCC have congressional authorization to uh, regulate a service as such as the internet? Currently, they do not if they're trying to do it anyway. They're using something called Section 706 authority, which is um, it's a rule that the FCC has had on the books for a while. It basically says, um, you should try to promote broadband across the country. And if there's regulations preventing you from imposing broadband, you should get rid of those regulations. Well, yeah, they're kind of doing the opposite. Now they're imposing regulations. They're using anti-regulatory authority to, to impose regulations. So that's not going to work either. And here's the important part. The net neutrality rules, which were voted on on December 21st, were made public to the public on December 22nd, after they were voted on. Nobody? The people in Congress? What are you guys voting on? The actual final copy of the rule was delivered to the offices of the commissioners at 11.30 the night before it was voted on. Is this it's certainly not transparency. This is important. The process is as important as the substance. 
there are substantive issues. What, what's the enforcement process? Are there going to be fines? Are there going to be uh, civil actions? It's not really clear in the rules. It turns out that wireless providers are, are more or less exempt from a lot of the provisions of the, of the current FCC net neutrality rules. In other words, they can block certain services, they can block certain things as long as they're transparent about it. And then market solutions. It, it's, a, lot of the, a lot of the FUD in, in net neutrality is, well, if we don't have net neutrality, um, the ISPs will do this, this, and this. Well, they could have done that this year, last year, five years ago. That's the way it is now. And the market has solved a lot of those problems. So do we really need these rules? Maybe, maybe not. The process needs to be transparent. What are the future uh, implications? Well, what's the industry response? Verizon's already filed a, um, an appeal on the net neutrality rules. Not surprising. Uh, implementation. The rules are not actually implemented now, but they'll go into effect in every few months. And there's certainly going to be court challenges. They're going to go right back to the D.C. Court of Appeals, who is more than likely to say to the FCC, uh, you, again, you don't have the authority to do what you're doing. And then they're going to start all over again. And again, and I'll, I'll delve a little bit into politics here. Generally speaking, generally speaking, Democrats are su more supportive of that. The Congress are more supportive of net neutrality. In other words, they generally support the government giving the FCC authority to regulate the internet. Generally speaking, although not totally, Republicans are generally opposed to this. With Republicans in the majority in the House, uh, it's not likely that you're going to see in this Congress, you know, you're not going to see the Congress say, here you go, FCC, you're going to be able to regulate the internet. So, really, at a standstill here for the next, you know, you know probably a couple of years. There's going to be fighting back and forth, but I don't think there's going to be any substantive things going on. Okay, this is my argument against that neutrality. Uh, again, most of my issues are procedural, but this is substantive. The FCC, um, again, separation of powers, you know, is, it goes back to Montesquieu and Locke, and the idea is you separate, you, you, you take powers of the government, you separate them among branches so that no one branch has more power than the other, that there are checks and balances. So that the government operates, it's basically based on the distrust of government when one branch exceeds the power that they're authorized to do, then the other branch is checked. And that's the idea of checks and balances. The, the current regulations, honestly, uh, in my opinion, are unnecessary. Um, they're, not really un, they're not really enforceable because the FCC doesn't have the authority. And because the FCC went ahead and said, hey, here's these new regulations, um, there's going to be a whole bunch of unnecessary litigation uh, for Verizon and from other ISPs. We're going to challenge the rules. We're going to eventually get thrown out. We're going to go back and back and forth. Now, again, none of this, uh, you know, you, you may have a great argument for net neutrality. And uh, how, many of you, how many of you in generally, in general, support the principle of net neutrality? Probably a lot of you. I would imagine a lot of you. Okay. I would argue to you that the way they're implementing net neutrality, you, even if you support net neutrality, you should be opposed to what they're doing right now. If you support net neutrality, you should, you should support the procedure of Congress authorizing the FCC to do it, and then, then they authorize it. So regardless of whether or not you support it or oppose it, I think it's important in this case that the procedure is, is very important. Due process is, is, is a fundamental to our country, and I think that's important. I have one minute left, and I will take any questions. Yes? Do I think ISP should be common carriers? So the question is, uh, if an ISP is classified as a common carrier like the phone company, then you should be regulated like the phone company. I would say no. Uh, the only reason is because, um, uh, in my opinion, uh, most of the internet infrastructure is privately owned. Uh, the reason I have files in my house is because Verizon paid for it to, the government didn't pay for it. So I think they should have some reasonable control over their internet. Is that true of the phone network, too? What's that? Responsible for the traffic that's going along their stuff, and do they really want to be charged with child pornography for all the idiots that are out there? The reason for this question is if, 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 it is their, if they do own the infrastructure, then they're responsible for everything that goes across it. And I mean, there, there's no easy answers to the question.
questions obviously right. missed. It's, and it's, it's either going to be, and, and his question is how set the USA is different. In other words, you have it easy. Right. You've got to have it easy. How does that make sure you can drive it? It doesn't. Once it leaves the borders. So, this is an issue I think is very important. The process is very important. And I think this community can put some inputs into that process. Whether you are opposed or support net neutrality, the process is important. Thank you.